Hi, folks, and welcome to another episode of Yes and Ask Me. My name is Rick, and I will be uh, interviewing some folks from the San Antonio Bear Stage Improv Community. Um, uh, we're, today's topic is going to be consent, uh, something that I know that everybody who is watching us is familiar with it to some degree or another. Uh, I want to introduce my panel now. Uh, my very first guest is Tina Jackson. Tina, would you go ahead and join us? When I show up, well, sure. Hey, hey, Tina. How are you? Tina, I know that you are the owner of Bear Stage Theater here in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. I also know that you are the creative director, and correct me if I'm wrong on this one, but you also wrote the curriculum for the level one through level six classes. Uh, yeah, I didn't write it alone. Uh, I had a lot of collaboration from teachers and exercises, and it's grown and expanded throughout the years. But yeah, I did. Uh, more or less write that curriculum. And I also know that you teach some of those classes as well, don't you? Oh yeah, levels one through six, baby. I'm there. <laughs> for all of our viewers, uh, I took Tina uh, for level uh, four and level six, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, our next guest is Dave Van Kirk. Would you please join us, Dave? Hey, Rick. Hey, Dave. Uh, Dave, I also know you to be a member of the San Antonio Improv Community. I know that you perform often uh, at Bear Stage here in San Antonio. And I also know that you are also one of the instructors here at Bear Stage. That's right. I, uh, I teach uh, level two relationships. Okay. How long have you been doing improv? Uh, and <laughs> Tina, do you want to get, <laughs> how long have I been doing this? Yeah, I was also going to say you're one of the performers at Comedy Sports. I don't think we need to leave that out. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, no, I've been doing improv. I, uh, I took my first class in January of 17. Okay. And um, I just started teaching uh, last spring. Fantastic. Uh, my next guest is Lindsay Nave. Lindsay, would you like to join us? Hey. Lindsay. Hey, Lindsay. So yeah. for all of our viewers, uh, I met Lindsay in my very first uh, uh, level one class at Bear Stage. Uh, and we've been best of friends ever since. Uh, Lindsay and I have uh, performed together on stage uh, in front of a live audience many times. We've taken classes together. Uh, we've practiced together. Lindsay, how long have you been doing improv? Um, I've been doing improv for about a year and a half, uh, oh. which is mind blowing to me that it's gone by so fast. Now, since I know you, though, I know that you're coming from a strong theater background as well, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I've been performing for, my gosh, since high school, so 20 plus years. I'm not going to say oh. how many. It's a <laughs> lot. 20, yeah, 20 plus years. Um, and yeah, so I started improv January 2018 um, with Bear Stage, uh, going through all six levels there, uh, and also perform at comedy sports. That's fantastic. A couple of things I want all of our viewers to know is that, uh, Lindsay, you are at this moment part of the Bear Stage Human Resources Committee. Is that correct? Yes. Um, I joined the Bear Stage HR team in the fall, uh, the summer in the fall, somewhere around in there. Um, and I'm part of the team there that uh, works to make sure that Bear Stage feels safe and comfortable for, for everyone. I think that's fantastic. And one thing I also want to point out is that Dave, uh, you were on the uh, HR team at Bear Stage at, for for a while, weren't you? Yeah, I was there for the I was there for the first uh, version of it. Uh, I was on the team for about six six months or so mm -hmm. until you became a teacher, and we keep our teachers yeah. off the yeah. HR. Excellent, excellent. Something else that I, I think all of, our, all of the, our viewers right now understand is that the topic of consent is something that we can apply to pretty much every part of our lives. Uh, this discussion, though, is going to be about consent specifically in the world of improv. And that would involve consent when we're performing live on stage with other members. It also involves consent when we're practicing offstage. It also involves consent when we're taking classes with our classmates. Uh, it also involves consent even during, um, oh, let's say workshops uh, where you might be doing scenes with someone that you've never actually met before. Um, so again, it's focused in the improv community. Now, Tina, um, with your extensive background in improv and owning an improv theater, uh, if you don't mind me starting with you, I'd like to ask you what, what, 
Describe consent to us, please, and then tell us why it's so important. Well, you did, I think, a pretty good job of illustrating like where within improv consent falls, which is pretty much everywhere. Uh, and I say pretty much, but it's everywhere, right? Um, uh, we don't want to cross boundaries with our scene mates, our teammates, our friends, uh, people in the community. We don't want to make anybody uncomfortable uh, because when we're uncomfortable, none of us are providing our best work. Um, it, it hurts everybody's enjoyment of uh, the piece or the show that you're putting on. Um, and it hurts the relationship and the community in general, right? You get hurt feelings. And if you don't address them, you know, like, uh, it, it, so really a lack of consent hurts so much that consent has to exist everywhere. Um, so on stage, off stage, uh, classes, workshops, uh, even just community gatherings and stuff. I mean, in and out of an improv theater, uh, using and exercising consent is so important to make the people in your life safe and comfortable. Um, because physical content, uh, contact, uh, especially right now, but like in general, physical contact, emotional um, stuff, uh, you know, topics that may be really sensitive to people, um, uh, taking some of that stuff on stage with you can be really harmful to not only the performance, but then um, to the people involved in that performance. And I think both are super important when we're talking about putting forward our best foot and creating in the most safe and amazing environment. Yeah, you mentioned some really, really good points there. And I know that uh, one of the things that I want to highlight that you just mentioned has to do with physical and emotional. So we're not just talking about consent when it comes to physical stuff on stage. We're talking about consent with physicality, of course, but also it sounds like things like topics of discussion, things that you can bring up and you wouldn't want to bring up. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, some people, uh, you know, for yourself where your own limits are. You cannot ever assume that your limits are everybody else's limits. Um, and so expressing where you're uncomfortable, and sometimes you don't necessarily know where some of those lines are until, some, in, until you cross them. And I think that's some of the hard part is you can say, hey, please don't jump on my back. I've got a sore back. I had, you know, a back injury. Please don't jump on my back. That seems to me like a pretty simple cut and dry I will not jump on my scene partner's back sort of thing. And sometimes you step into a scene, you're like, wait, I had no idea. I've never expressed this to my teammates. It made me really uncomfortable to discuss abortion on stage. Or um, uh, you guys, I think, ran into it in one of your classes too, talking about special education, where, mm -hmm. where people in your class had a, a really strong emotional reaction to even bringing up that topic because there's such a range of feelings that you can feel. And we never talked about it beforehand, like, hey, let's not do scenes about special education. We said, let's never make fun of people. Yeah. And, and we weren't doing that. Uh, but, but to even bring up the topic became very sensitive to uh, people in a classroom. And so we sit down and we address some of those things. It's, it's yeah. you know, your feelings are yours. And we didn't know we were gonna step in it, but we did. And how do we backtrack from that? And how do we ensure safety continues within this classroom? Right, uh, and it's really about communication and being clear, and and being able and free to step out of an exercise and say, "Hi, I'm feeling uncomfortable, and I don't want to be judged for it. I just want to tell you that this is happening." So, creating that safe space to be able to say what's in your mind and in your heart, instead of sort of pushing or obligating you to persist in a scene or a show that that really does step in it somewhere. I'm so glad that you that finished sense? off that by mentioning communication and how important that is. Uh, Lindsay, so one thing I'd like to hear from you is how does one, whether we're a student, uh, whether we're a team player, how do we communicate to our, to our teammates, people that we're performing with on stage or practicing with, what's the best way to communicate what our boundaries are and what we give consent to and what we don't give consent to? Sure. Um, I think one of the most important things is before you ever even go on stage is just to have that conversation um, and to kind of build that into part of the, the warmups that, that you might do or, or the time that you spend together before you go on stage. So, you know, even if um, you know each other well, it, it's still always good to ask, you know, how are you feeling today? Like, are there things, you know, not only going on in your life, but how are you physically? Are you, you know, or do you have anything going on, any physical limitations today? Um, 
you know, I think with, with both with teams that I'm on, like one of the main questions we talk about is like, how's your week? How, what's going on with you? So that we know where people's minds are, because sometimes topics that were fine the week before, you know, maybe a little sensitive this week. Um, and so just asking, um, it's, I am always really happy when somebody just asks, um, you know, is there anything that I should be aware of today? Um, and I think that that works well. It's like a, before you go on stage. Um, I think when it comes to talking about things like Tina mentioned that may pop up that you don't realize are a boundary until it happens, um, that I think depends a little bit on the relationships that you have um, and how comfortable you are to approach that. Um, one of the things that I, I really appreciate is that with the teams that I'm on, like we, we do take the relationships with each other very, very seriously and we spend time um, getting to know each other so that when things pop up, we can have those discussions. Um, I know I've had things happen um, in shows that made me slightly uncomfortable. And, um, and that was just a, a, you know, a, a note after the show was, hey, not, I feel a little bit uncomfortable with this. Can we maybe try not to do that next time? And, and it was a situation where um, my, my teammates didn't even realize that um, that had happened. And, um, but we're, but we're very respectful. Um, and when I approach that, um, and we're very careful to make sure that that didn't happen again. Um, and, and it was, you know, one of those things that we can kind of laugh about and be like, okay, let's move on. You know, it's, I think being able to have teammates that respect you as a person and respect you as a performer, um, allows for those, those conversations and those, and those vulnerable moments. And I think when it comes to performing as people that you're not necessarily on a team with, um, be it a workshop or be it, um, you know, a jam or like trying to, to do something new. Um, I think it's, if it's somebody that you're familiar with in the community, I think that um, just the improv community is, is generally pretty open-minded and that they're willing to have those conversations. So I, I would feel, feel pretty comfortable to go and, and, and chat and just be like, hey, well, maybe that wasn't so cool, you know, or, or like explain, like that made me slightly uncomfortable and here's why. Um, and, and I think it's important to give people that opportunity to, to grow um, and, and to give them a chance to, um, to know so that, that maybe they wouldn't do that again. And I think if, if something happens that you're not necessarily comfortable going to that person, um, you know, talking with, with some of the folks, you know, the teachers um, at the theater or, you know, talking with uh, letting people on HR know just so that we can follow up, um, not to come and like scold anybody, but just to make sure that um, people are aware about um, sensitivities um, for the people around them. We want it to be, you know, like Tina mentioned, the best performances are those that you can be vulnerable in um, and that you're willing to just relax and kind of go with the flow. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, we can't take the feelings of, of people around us into consideration. Absolutely. I, mean, I, oh. do, I do think it's something that has to be become habitual because the asking for consent muscle is not something that we flex a lot normally, uh, a lot of us in our everyday lives. Uh, <laughs> hopefully not. Uh, but so it, it really needs to be kind of um, enforced early on. I know uh, my first, very first improv classes uh, coming in as a person who doesn't have a performance background and improv being terrifying. What I'm thinking about is just me. I'm thinking only about myself and what mm. I'm going to say. I'm not thinking about the other person. So I, I, I haven't developed that sense that, you know, I'm an empathetic person but I haven't de developed that on stage. And yeah. um, so I not knowing right starting out. Yeah. What was that? I was, I was saying, I think it's very common when you're first starting out to think primarily about yourself. That's not even a selfish thing. It's just, it's where your head's at when you're first starting this. It's, am I doing this yeah. right or well? Uh, not mm -hmm. as much the consideration. And I think that's a very young improv move, but I think everybody experiences it. Yeah, absolutely. But it does, I, I, you know, even, no, no, that's absolutely right. And even I need like, uh, I think everybody needs reminders. Uh, mm -hmm. Even later on, I'm finding out stuff about uh, players that I play with a lot that I had no idea. I would have never guessed that uh, mm -hmm. questions that fall on the consent spectrum um, mm -hmm. of things to ask. And I had no clue. So it's, it's, I'm constantly being surprised. Yeah, and I think that's one thing that's really important to illustrate is that uh, nobody's perfect and nobody expects yeah. that uh, you know, uh, that once we have uh, a consent conversation, we never have to have it again. Um, mm -hmm. 
regular reminder, reminders, like you said, habitual conversations about it really help enforce what we know is true. I know from you, Dave, uh, because we've played together, because you've been in classes, because I've known you for a while, that you have had a, a bad back. Uh, and whether a book has cured it or not, you bad. have. <laughs> bad. <laughs> bad back. Um, but, but that I, in an improv scene, am never going to think to myself, it is okay for me to jump in. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's because I know who you are. And whether or not you've said to me, hey, my back's feeling great, go ahead and jump on it, or whether you haven't said anything about it in a while, and I just, I don't want to presume anything sure. uh, yeah. is a-okay, right? I think uh, when you're, especially when you're taking a workshop or where you're working in a jam situation, it's better safe than sorry. If you think there's yeah. something that might not be okay, don't do it. It, there are other improv moves you yeah. literally have infinity in front of you so i, I really yeah. feel like yeah. i really feel like anytime you have to ask the question the answer is probably <laughs> no <laughs> save it for later save it for something else yeah. is it okay yeah. can be a question we ask later hey man i really thought about jumping on your back in that scene because i thought it'd be <laughs> fun if we could uh you know ride out of uh, right out of town together uh, on a on a horse or whatever yeah right Go ahead and jump right, on right, that right. horse. Don't jump on your seat partner. Uh, and you can play a similar move. Could it be funnier if you jumped on somebody's back? Sure. Is it appropriate to do that without a conversation? Nah. Simple as that. So one thing that one thing that I'm hearing from all of you guys is the importance of communication. Uh, every single one of you has touched on that idea that you have to be able to communicate to the people that you're performing with uh, what your boundaries are, what's okay and what's not okay. So Dave, what I want to know is that as a teacher of one of the lower levels of level two class, um, and many of them I know don't aren't coming from theater backgrounds like Tina is and, and like Lindsay is, um, how do you create that safe space where they all feel not just that they're welcome to give their, their boundaries, but that they really should, that it's a really, that's an opportunity that they need to take advantage of to give that communication to their classmates or their scene partners. Uh, talking about it. I mean, just, just talking about it, talking about uh, not only at the top of each class, but talking about it after each exercise and saying, uh, and mm -hmm. looking for things that maybe didn't feel right. And, um, you know, trying to foster that, that, uh, that it is a safe space, obviously, and that you can say when something doesn't feel right. I think a lot of people in the real world uh, try to avoid those conversations. Um, mm -hmm. So it, 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 you do have to work hard um, instructing improv and getting people to that is it always are they always feeling safe i have no idea i'm not i'm not in any of their heads but i know that uh uh just having that conversation each time and even if i see something that uh, you know if i see two friends that i know they're close uh they're taking the class together for whatever uh partners in some way and uh they have a moment you know talking about that moment afterwards whether it's you know uh, uh an intimate hug or or uh, a stroking of the leg, See, um, putting that in the context of, well, what if it wasn't them? What if it were two mm -hmm. other people mm -hmm. here, two mm -hmm. people who are not as close, so. Mm -hmm. And how does yeah. it reach to an audience too? Because even if it's totally fine between these two friends, uh, which is a thing that came up in a rehearsal like three years ago uh, when we first opened, was in a rehearsal, two friends said, well, I would make that joke with him normally. I know he's fine with it. Uh, and it was a verbal joke um, that came off to me very racist. Uh, and, and it wasn't that these two were racist. These were both actually men of color, but they were having this joke between each other. And I was like, man, but that would not play in front of an audience. And that's not just my sensitivity. If my sensitivity goes up, a lot of other people's are too. Even if you guys are fine with it, is it fine overall? Yeah. That's consent with the audience too. And you don't get to really ask for it. You earn it. Right. Uh, you know, uh, you don't ask the audience before a show, is it OK if we bring up these things? Usually, you know, uh, you know, if something is brought up on stage, we have to take care of it really carefully. If it's a subject matter, if it's uh, intimate in any way, you you make the audience feel safe by how you react to it. So if everybody goes, you know, we know that moment doesn't feel safe um, yeah. and we have to address it, not just uh, sometimes after the show, but sometimes in the show. Uh, addressing some of those moments. And that's something that is, uh, you know, it's, it, it's damage control a little bit, but it's communication too, is communicating with your scene partners how to handle that if a moment needs to 
pause on stage. <laughs> we need to stop mm -hmm. a moment that is happening live on stage. I don't care if there's an audience. We can't push our scene partners to a place or our audience to a place where they're gonna walk out and leave unhappy because improv is supposed to be fun you guys that's what we need yeah. we need to make sure that the audience uh and that the performers are all in the right state of mind to be able to have fun yeah, absolutely uh, so, yeah. so Lindsay, one thing that i want to know from you uh both you and tina are coming from from theater and performance backgrounds um mm -hmm. many years of doing that Lindsay, would you say that your idea of consent uh has changed over time uh I, now that you've arrived at their stage, is it different mm. uh, than what maybe you experienced when you were in high school doing theater or college doing theater? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think that whenever you're doing something theater-based and there's a script, um, things may be written into the script. I think I had my first, I had my first stage kiss when I was 15 years old. Like I wasn't even driving yet, and you know, in in like having those conversations and like making sure that you know, the partner felt safe and that the director was there. Like, I mean, you're 15, things are awkward anyway. Um, and, I, and I had just gotten braces. Like it was this whole, it was just a mess. Um, but the, uh, it was, it was built into the script. And so like when I accepted the role, I knew it was there. Um, I knew the person that I would have this moment with. We were actually very good friends. And so like, I was okay with, with, with that moment, even at that age. And then knowingly. Right. Like I stepped into it and I knew it was coming every yeah. night. It happened at the same time after the same line. And it, and it was always something that was, that was steady. It was part of the story. Um, and that goes with, with, with anything. I think there are some scripts that for me, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing the things that are, are in them, but I know that ahead of time because the script is there. But mm -hmm. improv, it's different um, because there is no script. Like there's, I, can't, I never go into a, a scene or a performance and I think, well, how do I feel about doing this today or touching this on this topic today? Because you literally don't know what's going to happen until it happens. Like sometimes you don't even realize what's going to come out your mouth, like even your own mouth until it does. And, and so you can't, you can't prep. You can't have that conversation ahead. Of, like, I mean, you have to have that conversation ahead of time because you, it's not the steady expectation. And so in, in terms of like in that same situation, like if there's a kiss, um, mm -hmm. You know, there there have been some improv that I've seen where there has been some kissing and things, and 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 it, and honestly, as an audience member, it it depends on the vibe and what's happening and and the relationship. Because when you watch people perform, you can see if there's like how comfortable they are with each other, right? Yeah. Chemistry. Yeah, you yeah. can see that chemistry, and so I I think even watching it from an audience, like sometimes it would feel okay, and sometimes it wouldn't. Um, you know, for me, I, I, I'm dating somebody in, in the improv community. Like, I don't know that we would do that on stage because it might make other people uncomfortable, even though I'm comfortable with that person. So like to Tina's point, you have to be aware not only of like what's happening on the stage, but what's happening between the stage and the audience. Yeah. And in a play, there's agreement, you know, it's coming, you know, there's a script, but with improv, I think part of what makes it so exciting is that, you know, we're all making it up on the moment. So um, there's a, the extra adrenaline element of it, of, of what's going to happen. And I, I would not be comfortable with, with the same boundaries that I set in theater based off of a script that I would in improv. Um, even though I would be comfortable with, with people, possibly, it, there's still that agreement with the audience that has to be taken into consideration. Well, and to your point, too, is I think, uh, you know, I would be comfortable with a certain amount of touching or physicality or intimacy with um, I would say a handful of it, I, like I would feel comfortable with that, uh, mm -hmm. with a certain amount of people, but not everybody. That's not right. to say that my limits with, uh, Lindsay are the same as they are with Dave or Rick. And that's not because you're a woman. It's because of my comfortability with, you know, it's like if, if we were to do something together, you know, it's limits exist for everybody. And some of them are hard and fast. Don't touch me here. I'm not comfortable with that. You know, for sure at Bear Stage, we always say no, no groping, no bathing part, no bathing suit parts. Like we're not, I think no improv scene necessitates yeah. that yeah. ever, right? And so we're never going there. Uh, and that's a hard and fast Bear Stage rule. A lot of everything else falls in this gray area of if it's okay with you, it's fine with me as long as you are both okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but you know, that can change day to day too. Uh, just because I'm in a great 
mood today <laughs> doesn't mean I'm going to be in a great mood and like really physically available tomorrow. So touching base before shows is so, so, so vital mm -hmm. and touching base in classes. You know, one of the things that we do and Dave can speak to this too is, you know, day one, level one, we introduce our HR policy before any improv starts, before we do a warm up, before we introduce everybody, you know, we say, here are the rules and standards that we set for our classrooms. And they're different than what you can do on stage. Because in a classroom, you don't choose who you're in the room with. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to think that in, in team shows that you've chosen your scene partners, you're comfortable with them to a certain degree. So there's a little bit more flexibility there. But when you're not choosing your classmates, we set some hard and fast rules to keep those classrooms safe. So even if you guys are best pals and it's okay if you smooch or if it's okay if you slap each other on the ass, whatever's fine with you two as friends may not be classroom appropriate and you might get dinged for it. And we'll, you know, I, uh, as a teacher, uh, have had trouble sometimes saying, hey, you can't do that because it's, it is an uncomfortable conversation. Dave, have you had any conversations in the classroom that you've had to sort of just back somebody off or down or explain some of the limits? Yeah, I have actually. And um, when uh, things have happened, I've always seen, I, I like it because it's a, it's a teaching opportunity. It's here's, okay, here's a real in practice. This thing happened. We can't put it, we can't, it, we can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. This happened. Let's yeah. talk about it. Yeah. And it's, and it's, it's so much, it's so much, I mean, I wouldn't want an example every class, but having that example, I mean, it really gets the point across so much better and, uh, and clear and being able to, okay, now that we've, it's not hypothetical anymore. We've seen it in action. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm yeah, never, it's, it's at least I try to be, I mean, I, I never, um, you know, like it's improv. Sometimes we, you know, say things, we have no idea what we're going to say. We have no idea what we're necessarily mm -hmm. going to do. And it, things just happen. So, you know, I try to uh, be as uh, clinical about it unless I, I, anytime it's happened, I've never seen a person with, uh, well, they've got malicious intent uh, with right. what they're doing. No. It just, it just happened. Uh, they're usually apologetic about it, um, but it's a great, it's a great yeah. talking point. It is. So these are really important points and I'm glad that we're talking about these accidental uh, violations of boundaries because we have two comments that I wanna highlight from our Twitch feed. Uh, one of them is the question, at what point do boundaries get in the way of your performance? Another Never. one is, what? <laughs> the other one is, what do you say to someone who says, I'd never try improv. I heard you're not allowed to say no. Now at Bear Stage, I host a weekly training, a uh, montage training. And what I tell all of the participants of this training is you can protect yourself first. Uh, don't put the scene above your comfort level. Uh, you should always be able to say no in a scene. Please, please, please always know that if you're not comfortable with any action, you can always say no. And I want everybody to understand that, that if you've never done improv before, you are not obligated to do the exact thing that your scene partner is telling you to do. If it, if it pushes your boundary level someplace, your comfort level that you don't wanna go, you can absolutely say no. Yeah, I'd like to highlight that too, because I think that's one thing uh, that can get really bastardized about improv is we use the phrase yes and all the time. It's one of the first things we teach in improv is that improv is more fun if you agree and then add to the scene, right? It's one of the very most basic improv principles. But I think a lot of improv has gotten really fucked up sometimes because we use the idea of yes and, and we have to agree. Um, it's a bad move if we don't agree. And so we, um, I, I know I've been in positions before, uh, not lately, uh, thankfully, because, because this conversation is a lot more prevalent than it used to be. But uh, in 2007, 2008, when I'm in Chicago and I'm training at IO, I'm, I'm, I'm working, I'm training, I'm a student, um, it is that yes and can get really out of control if you have to agree, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, somebody tells me I have to give them a lap dance or a blowjob, bullshit, I don't have to do any of that. But in 2007, 2008, I'm using yes and, and nobody's told me, no, nobody's honestly having the conversation that it's okay to say that. It's okay to say no to something that's so outrageous. There's no way that we can get out of this scene without a blow job. It's like, this is so bullshit. But like, and I, 
as a fucking 20 something and like, do I have to do this right now? My mind spins, I panic on stage and I'm like, what do I, what is the thing I have to do? And I get stuck in, well, I guess I have to. And, and I'm not saying <laughs> like you, I, I did not react the way I would today is what I'm saying. Uh, but that's because this conversation is an important one that we are now having that I don't think we were having 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Uh, so as improv evolves, I think we're making safer, better art by having those conversations, by not subjecting our teammates, um, male, female, gay, straight, uh, black, white, you know, like there's no, there's nobody who has to be subjected to yes and as uh, last resort. I was like, I guess I have to. Um, yes, and is 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 a great guideline, and and we ask for it uh, from our students, from our performances. But it should never obligate you to do something that is against what your final principles are. If you are uncomfortable with it, by all means, don't do it. By all means, there are an infinite number of choices in front of you on how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and then afterwards, the, uh, if you the, need to have a discussion with somebody, you should absolutely have that discussion with them. Dave, go ahead. Oh, absolutely. And just to the point of the first uh, Twitch comment, uh, oh, uh, saying what, you know, what, when does it, when does it become an obstacle? Uh, Tina was exactly right. Never. I'm a big believer. I forget who I read this off of first, but uh, that limitation uh, just leads to exploration. Um, uh, Lindsay and I are both on comedy sports. There's a lot of limitations to what we mm -hmm. can and cannot do. Um, but some of those shows are just as good as any other, uh, you know, regular long form, uh, no rating improv, uh, Absolutely. ever is, you know, there's, there's, it's ridiculous, the idea. And like you said, with, uh, you know, if you can have, if you're, if you have to have base your whole scene on insp on the inspiration, the initiation of pineapple, uh, you can go another way when you hear blowjob too. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. We talk about yeah. Rolodexing being something that we, you know, we teach in our improv classes is to, to take something and what does it make you think of? What does it make you, what does it remind you of? To be able to expand out from the suggestion itself. Uh, but that can go for blowjob scenes and lap jobs or lap dance scenes too. It's like, oh, I would never. It reminds me of my mom. You know, like you can make, you can make a thing about it. It's like why you would never. You can justify it and still say no and like let that be part of your character move because mm -hmm. there's no reason that it has to happen i promise you no scene is saved by a blow job uh no scene is saved by a lap dance no scene is better off because that happened because there's a million more infinite ways to handle a situation than a to demand that of your scene partner and b to subject yourself to having to do that mm -hmm. yeah. infinite whatever. possibilities yeah what I was going to add is I, I think that some of those topics that I, I think people often are sensitive in nature are often that low hanging fruit anyway. So you, why would you want to take the easy way? Like, you know, be, yeah. be creative, um, make a choice that isn't quite as obvious. And, and like, you know, we, we want humor that is, is smart um, and that is witty and not just, you know, the low hanging fruit, like who, who needs that? And I think in terms of like how that in fact, that, that impacts your performance, like, I've had it happen where, you know, something that made me slightly uncomfortable happened once and then the next performance, it, it happened again. And then the next performance, it happened again. And, you know, and, it, and part of that conversation that we talk about a lot about communication and making sure that we're willing to have those conversations is that my performance was affected by that because, because I wasn't having that conversation. Um, I, you know, tend to be a heart player, but I, I do get in my head. And so when that was happening, I'm spin my wheels are spinning trying to figure out, okay, how do I still say yes? How do I yes and this, but also get out of it kind of thing. And so like my, my performance suffered. And then as a result, the team performance suffered because I was in my head because I wasn't having that conversation. So like, it's, it always, it's always going to come back to that communication. Um, and, and, you know, recognizing that people, have, you know, assuming best intentions um, that people weren't trying to make me feel uncomfortable. It was just, it was that low hanging fruit that they were jumping for and being able to grab that and say, Hey, we, we need to challenge ourselves to do better than this. Um, and that opens up, like, like Dave said, to Dave's point, it's a learning opportunity. So like it opens up not just my experience, but for the team and for the performers I'm with, it opens us up to 
being challenged to making sure that we are performing at a high level, not just that low hanging. And when you say a high level, I also, I put with that an intelligent level, right? Yeah. Uh, one of the phrases we use a lot in improv too is, is play to the top of your intelligence. Even if you're playing a three-year-old, it doesn't mean you can't know everything about any particular topic. I think that's part of the mm-hmm. comedy is playing to the top of your intelligence. If the smartest joke you can make is a blowjob lap dance joke, you know, you can reach a little higher. You can, you can yeah. strive to be, to use a little bit more of a, a smarter angle. Um, mm-hmm. There's plenty of humor out there that is that low hanging fruit and there's plenty of places to find it. And I think improv really does challenge us to be more intelligent and smarter in the way that we produce comedy. And uh, you can tell me as much as you want that it's really hard to think on the spot. I agree, I know. Um, and if that's the only thing you can come up with, sure. But I bet that your brain can go somewhere else with it. Mm-hmm. And, and I think it sometimes can be a challenge. I'm not gonna say I've never stepped in it. I'm not gonna say that I've never taken that low hanging fruit and made a mm-hmm. joke that I wasn't super proud of later. Um, but it does mean that we can challenge ourselves to step out of what is easy and, and keep challenging ourselves toward what is more intelligent and smarter, wittier comedy. And I think, yeah. I think that is more rewarding for me is when I make a really intelligent move, a really intelligent joke or a really intelligent uh, play with a scene partner than taking that low hanging fruit, like you said. I, I love this. I love that we began this conversation about consent. We talked about the importance of respect, the importance of communication and communicating those boundaries to the people that we're performing with. Uh, we also talked about creating that safe space uh, when uh, particularly by people who are our, our teachers, our instructors, folks that do training sessions. Um, I think it's part of our responsibility as well to create that safe space so that, like Lindsay said, we can have that communication. Uh, Tina, like you said, we can have that respect for each other and we know that we're able to actually communicate all of that. I think that's fantastic. Uh, folks, uh, we've actually reached the end of our discussion. I yeah, love I forever. I'm going to say this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this topic. I love talking about it. It's important. I think every theater and every team should be having these discussions mm-hmm. uh, because no, no one thing that works for one team is necessarily going to be the exact same thing that works for another. You've got to, mm-hmm. you got to talk about it with your people. Yeah, absolutely. And I love the idea that what works uh, what works for some other team is something that we can learn about and we can find out what's working for them and maybe apply to our own leader, maybe our own teams, our own practice sessions. Absolutely. Again, we're hitting on communication uh, all over again. I think that's great. Uh, Dave Van Kirk, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for giving us our in some of this insight. I appreciate it. Absolutely. My pleasure, Rick. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Lindsay, uh, thank you for the insight. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Thank you for the storytelling. Really appreciate it. Of course, anytime. And Tina Jackson, uh, owner of Bear Stage here in San Antonio, the sponsor of the show. Um, thank you for putting this on and uh, thank you so much hey, for joining thanks us. Thanks for hosting it. This was your baby. This is your idea. <laughs> thank you so much. A few points that I want to mention as we close out. Um, Oh, also the viewers, for everybody on Twitch right now, thank you so much for being part of this. You are also part of this uh, this discussion right now, and I certainly appreciate you guys joining in. I love some of these I comments want- on Twitch. I, do, uh, I will answer, uh, Chopper, some of your yeah. questions uh, after the, the thread ends. Uh, I want to make sure that those questions get addressed, uh, but we are out of time. So. Oh, fantastic. So Chopper, stay on Twitch, and uh, Tina will go ahead and answer those questions for you. Yeah, I'll check you. I also want to say that uh, right. Oh, we, our next show is going to be Friday uh, at six o'clock. Uh, so again, join us on Friday at six o'clock. We're talking about uh, agreement. So it's going to be uh, a whole new panel, a whole new discussion. Yes. And I hope you join us. Uh, right now, folks, we are in crazy. Oh, check out. <laughs> yes, and shit. Important. <laughs> it's permanent. So you don't forget. Oh. Um, <laughs> <I don't> forget. <laughs> Folks, we are we are in crazy times, and uh, improv theaters all across the country are are in a little bit of pain right now. Um, 
please support your local improv theater. If you've never seen improv before, oh, find your local improv theater, bookmark the website, and go to them as soon as quarantine is over. Um, um, support them. If you're in the San Antonio area uh, and you've been to Bear Stage or you've never been, but you're watching this show right now, uh, we're also hurting a little bit. Please go to bearstage.com. There's a link on the website that you, where you are uh, able to support us and uh, uh, show that you appreciate us. Um, folks, uh, I think that is it. Thank you again for joining. Thank you again for being part of this panel. I love you guys. We appreciate it. Love you too. Love you too, Rick. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Peace. Bye.